are you excited? Katie and Peter are back on our screens. <laughs> So I'm trying to get the nip out and dirty skin. <laughs> this year we've seen them cope with Harvey's devastating accident. I couldn't even bear to hear him scream. We've seen them handling the ups and downs of family life. I've been called greedy, I've been called selfish on my birthday. Beautiful. And we've seen them shine in the public eye in the four corners of the world. Bloody windy. Now as Peter falls sick, things are about to get scary. Nothing's working, he's lost so much weight with the nasty killer bug threatening his life. It was actually uh, swelling up his brain. Will pregnant Katie be able to cope with his illness? Find out on Katie and Peter, the next chapter. It's 10.15 a.m. Katie and Peter have touched down in London after a 12-hour flight from L.A. They have spent the last 10 days on a successful American tour. Today, though, Katie is feeling unwell and Pete is seriously ill. I feel sick again. Pete is really, really ill. He probably won't even talk to camera because he might vomit. He's been sick all flight. Hasn't eaten anything. Even if he drinks water, he's sick. So we're going to call the doctor when we get in. I've told him he's going to go to bed. I'm going to open all the windows. I'm not going to sleep with him yet until, unless he feels better. Because um, I don't want to catch it. If it is gastroenteritis he's got, then that can kill the baby and it's not good for the kids to get. Pete thinks he has a tummy bug as he's been sick seven times during the return flight. How do you feel? Terrible. What's sick? My head's really hurting. But do you feel sick now? Uh, I just feel a little bit nauseous, but not much. I'll be back in shift for doctors now. Oh, I hope now, aren't we? They arrive home where their babies have been waiting for them. Fearing he might pass on the bug to the children, Pete doesn't want to go near them. I'm not well. Oh, I'm sorry. All the way here on the flight, I haven't eaten for two days. I feel, I feel completely drained. That's why I'm going to keep asking Becky to, now. Keep asking Becky to keep trying the doctor. I'm eating now. Daddy. Yeah, he's not well. It's not that I don't want to, it's just, I'm not really just... I think I've got gastro, whatever you call it, and I don't want to give it to the kids. Junior, I love you. Say love you. I can't. I'm so sorry. It's not where we see. Sorry, it's not that I don't want to. Tomorrow I'll give you all the comments you can ever think of, okay? Guys, I'm going up. Okay, love you. Kids love you. While Pete drudges off to bed, life goes on as normal for the rest of the family. How have the horses been, Carol? Well, that little terror. Oh, I know Rosie would have escaped. She always does, every she house. Has, what was she she was a little <laughs> Yeah, but where did she go? In all the other fields? I'll just let her get on with that then. The following morning, Katie is feeling rough, but Peter can't get out of bed. As you can see, I'm not well. Pete's upstairs in bed ill. I, I've had the doctor come up and he's signed me off for five days, he said, because I look exhausted and I need to rest as I'm only weeks away from the birth. So, I feel far, I just need to catch up back on sleep and stuff because I'm knackered. Because we did have a hard week in America. 
Overnight, Peter's been vomiting. He has developed a severe headache and is now feeling very tired. You know, we've come back and I know the officer are, are like ringing saying, you know, we've got to do this and we've got to do that. But they're also understanding and they know that when you're in a situation like this, I didn't even wait for a doctor's note. They know it's very rare for me not to want to get up and you know, do something or not to want to get up and actually... You saw how active I was all the time in America. It's just not me for six. So they know there's no point in me. Why would I want to stay in bed for days and days and days? I mean, I'm not married to Yoko Ono. Do you know what I mean? Why would you want to spend days and days in bed with her anyway? But that's it. That was his problem, not mine. With Pete bedridden, his brother Mike has come round to lend a hand. He's my brother and I've been around him for a while, so I've seen him sick, but I've never seen him this out of it. Never. It's the first time I've seen him, like, lifeless. And he's lying there. And it's just, it's weird, it's really bizarre, because, I mean, we all get sick, but I don't know what's hit him. It's like, it's like he's been hit by a truck. And he's just lying there, he's just motionless, and he just wants to sleep and he can't talk and he can't eat. I can't even get a hey mic out of him, you know, which is a bit weird. Coming up, as Peter is rushed into hospital, will pregnant Katie be able to cope on her own? I'm just all over the place because I don't know what to do because I've got the kids and I don't want to take the kids to a hospital. And how will this affect their working life? We've cancelled everything since they came back from America. It's 8.30 a.m. Katie is still feeling rough and Peter is about to spend his second day in bed. Since we've been back from L.A., I've been bedridden. I haven't been able to get out of bed and even going to the bathroom if I do is one hell of a struggle. Going down to get a glass of water and that is almost like I'd just rather... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying it, but I'd rather die of thirst than have to go downstairs and get it. It's really knocked me for six. The doctor says I got really, really bad flu. Funny thing is, I got this just before I left Los Angeles. I started feeling really weird and all the way back on the plane I was throwing up and I guess the worst thing is that I haven't been able to give the kids a cuddle which has really been tough. You know, even now I, I hear Junior calling out for me and, and I just can't you know, I reply, but then he gets excited and tries to come in the room and I keep pushing him away and he just thinks that I don't want to cuddle him, you know, which is hard for me because I, I hate being away from him. Anyway, Kate isn't well either. We're sleeping in separate beds, which is very rare for us. But here's the, here's the only, only, only positive thing out of this. Before I went to America, and while I was in America, did I or did I not say I want to lose five kilos, which is ten pounds, which is about half a stone? Well, for some strange reason, I have lost that weight, and I haven't lost that weight for years since the jungle. So in a bizarre twist of fate, I've actually achieved one goal, but believe me, I'd rather be well than go through this again. This was horrible. It made the worst. Oh, my head is just poundage. Down in the living room, Katie is recovering too. We haven't been sleeping in the same room because I don't want to get, because he's actually been sick and everything, and I don't want to get what he's got. That's the last thing I need, so... I haven't even had my husband to cuddle in bed. No feet touching, no hand touching. I just get the odd grunts from him when I say, you're right, and he's like, mm, mm. So we've gone from America all happy high to me being exhausted and Pete being ill. So we just need a week or so to repair, I think. But Pete's really deteriorating and the doctors have been up. Um, so I don't, know what's, I don't know what's wrong with him. Neither do the doctors, so... Fingers crossed. I hope he gets better. Overnight, Peter's condition deteriorates and he's taken to Red Hill Hospital. 
Katie is left at home to pick up the pieces. Last night an ambulance took him to hospital. Um, it's been a bit of a nightmare. Nothing's working. He's lost so much weight. So he's very dehydrated. So they will put him on a drip, and which is standard. And hopefully that will make him feel better. But I will know more later. But at the moment, you know, they don't even know what's wrong with him. Neither do I, really. But I feel sorry for him because he hasn't even been able to cuddle the kids or anything. So I'm just all over the place because I don't know what to do. Because I've got the kids and I don't want to take the kids to a hospital because it's an infectious place. Whereas I shouldn't be in a hospital amongst illness either because I don't want to get anything being eight months pregnant. At this rate, I'm going to be dropping this baby bloody early. I can tell you the stress and all this that's going on. I'm just like a walking wreck. It's like doing the kids, now I'm going up to see her, um, Pete, trying to keep up with the cleaning because we haven't got a housekeeper. Um, just normal stuff, what every, every other normal person does. But it is knackering. And no one's here to look after me. Oh, what a shame. It is a shame. So, everyone better make up to it and I've had this baby, I can tell you. I want all the sympathy in the world. I just want to lay there and be waited on. Oh, I can't wait for that. Just a few more weeks. Done. Meanwhile, their manager, Claire, is on the phone to her team. She's cancelling Katie and Peter's future appointments. Hi, we need to cancel um, Sunday's the David Guest um, launch at Blake's Hotel. We need to cancel the Perfume Awards uh, on the Monday night and um, the Spider-Man premiere. We've cancelled everything since they came back from America. We've had to cancel um, some phone interviews. Um, Pete's column that he does with New Magazine, and um, we've cancelled the Spider-Man premiere, David Guest launch that was happening on Sunday. Um, Kate was to present a big award at the Perfume Awards, which she got a beautiful Rosa Cavalli dress for, which we've had to cancel that. Quite a lot in those space of days, but when there are a couple, you can split it between the two, but when both of them come down, it's an awful lot of work to have to cancel. Um, everyone is really understanding, you know, when you're ill, there's nothing you can do about it, so we've cancelled everything till next week and then we'll review it next Tuesday. Even though everything else has been cancelled, there's one job that Katie wants to do at all costs. She and Harvey are about to start a photo shoot for OK Magazine. I always do shoots every now and again because I get so many letters, so many people on the website wanting to know about Harvey. And like I said before, I don't know any other person in the public eye has got a special needs child who actually talks about it um, and I think you know lots of people want to know what I go through and stuff because they can relate to it. One of the challenges of the day for Katie will be to keep Harvey focused at all times while they're in front of the camera. Harvey's a bloody nightmare at photo shoots. Now he's gonna moan because he's got to put his t-shirt on and we've got six changes and trust me he's gonna be a nightmare especially when it comes to changing his clothes, because he hates it. Mum? Mum? Can you put him outside? He's getting agitated with everyone playing with him. He doesn't like fuss, does he? Oh, my God. <laughs> While Mum Amy gets Harvey on the trampoline, Katie puts the finishing touches to her makeup. Are you really choking, you lot? <laughs> I love it. There's a lot of love spray. It. To prepare for the shoot, photographer Andy Neal has decided to go and play with Harvey so the two of them can bond better. It's good for his muscles. It's good to get him to lose a bit more weight. And he obviously enjoys it. He's strong, isn't he? Again? He loves rough and tumble things. So this is really good for him to get back to our, what he really likes to do. <laughs> he, he's been on trampolines before. Supposed to be taking the picture. Nearly time to start the shoot, and Katie and Harvey yeah. share a moment together. Where's mummy's eyes? Yes. Where's mummy's ears? Ears. 
Good mm. boy. Where's mummy's nose? Mm. Where's mummy's mouth? Mm. Good boy. <laughs> well done. Mm. Give, give, give. Hello. Hello, Harvey. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> How are you? How are you, Harvey? Oh, that's disgusting. Where's the camera? And the photo shoot finally gets underway. Yay! Oh, are you just smiling? <laughs> Should we do that again? Smell. Harvey, laugh, go ha ha ha. Harvey, go to cry. <laughs> As the shoot starts, Harvey seems to be enjoying himself. Laugh. Sit coat straight here. Harvey, cry. <laughs> Now laugh. Look like Pete then. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Oh. Do you reckon you've got that one? <clears throat> Only because uh, if you've got loads to do it, he's going to get bored yeah, very let's, quick. Let's call yeah. So far, so good. But I can see he's getting out of it when he starts doing that of his head. I've got loads to go yet. Wow! Where's that face half? Same face. Are okay? That's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sit up. Give mummy a kiss. Ready. On the cheek. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. With her husband in hospital and her family going through a rough patch, Katie's in a reflective mood. We get so many letters on the in, uh, website. People who write to me, people who write to my mum. People who put things through my letterbox saying how they admire the fact that I speak about having a special needs child. Not that you should have any medal for having a special needs child, because to me he's still normal. But it's the fact I don't know anybody else in the public eye who has got a child like Harvey and who does talk about it. And there's so many people out there, you know, who can relate to me and who I can relate to. And I just think it's interesting for people to see what, what it is like as well. So, um, can I just wipe your mouth? A sandwich. Right, you've had enough? Because you're going to turn into an egg. All right. Right, would you like a drink of water? Would you like a drink of water? In a pink cup? Right, sit back then. What do you say? Thank you, who? Right. He's going to burp. I knew that. That is disgusting. What do you say? What do you say? Right. right, where are you going? Are you going now? Yeah, he's, he's speech and that is a bit delayed. Um, but, you know, he will catch up. And that's just half. He's unique and I wouldn't change him for anything. So. All gone. All gone. All gone. Half is the way he is and that's it. You know, I'm not the brightest of people, you know. If, you, if I went back to school... Harvey, if I went back to school... I'll be thick as two shit. You ask me any scientific question, math, some crap at maths. Um, English, I'm just crap at everything, really. Apart from uh, getting my kit off and that, and using my brain every now and again. But apart from that, academically, you know, at school, I wasn't the brightest. But look, I've become successful and made money in other ways. So who knows how Harvey could be a great musician or something you just don't you no one knows what's going to happen in the future and i think just because people have got disabilities doesn't mean to say they can't be given the chance as well careful of your windows claire because he will go nuts after a brief pause it's back to work While watching the shoot, Katie's mum reflects on Harvey's condition. With Harvey, it's been a learning curve for myself, Kate, the whole family, and how to deal with a disabled child. Because at the very beginning, we didn't have a clue. Uh, one, two, three. But I mean, there has been times when Kate's been down and low over it. There has been times when she's cried over it, and there has been times when I have, because you think, why, why is this, why is that? But then when you sort of, you rally around together, and you talk about it, and then you it sorts it out where a lot of people just keep it in, and that's wrong. That's lovely.
beautiful. <laughs> when we first we found out that Harvey was blind, you think, my God, no, it's not possible. Can't be. But, you know, and then you think, why? And then she, you sort of question yourself, and she was going to the doctor saying, is it anything I've done? You know, is it genetic? Is it anything that, like, the dad's done? You know, you go, I think every person goes through that. They want to know why. It's hard, but you have to accept it, and you have to get on with it. To push it. Ready? Oh, wee! Yay, look at Harvey! Wee! It's been a massive learning curve. I think that's, that's when she says, I don't know anything different. Because to me, Harvey is normal. Because it's true. She's, she must have gone through the worst, the worst. You imagine having a baby and you're up all night because he wants 13 bottles of milk, you know, and, and then in the day he wants the same. And then, like, you can't leave him because you're worrying about him. So I think she's gone through the worst year a mum could have with a child, to be honest with you. And I think because of that, to her, anything else that comes along would be normal. And I think, you know, she's been really great with him, really, and patient with him. So, <laughs> to him, he is, to Kate, he is normal. <laughs> she has taken a lot of stick over Harvey at the beginning, and I think she was very brave over it as well. And I think she does do really well with him. And I think it's given her more of an understanding of life, what the meaning of life is about. And it, give, it makes you more, how can I put it, um, human. It, make, it humbles you as well. And I think she's learned that. <coughs> it's more, <coughs> more important things in life. And I think she's learned that. <laughs> now I'm deeply concerned about the treatment that he's been having. Coming up, how will the family react when they find out Pete has meningitis? We want to know what is wrong with him. What's happening to Pete in hospital? And how will Katie cope under the pressure? Because it's too far for me to keep going, working, doing the kids. I'm exhausted. I'm eight months pregnant, Mum. I can't keep doing it, is what I'm saying.